and at his great-grandson, who's made a life's work out of studying his talented forebear. Buried in Dunedin's Cavisham Valley, this car wrecker's yard holds nothing less than the key to New Zealand's geography. From this place, 130 years ago, our first surveyor general set up the mapping system that tells us where we live today. But this man, John Turnbull Thompson, was much more than that. Painter, author, engineer, explorer, philosopher. He laid out Invercargill, he laid out Singapore. Yet he's one of the undersung characters in our history. What we do know of him is thanks to one man, his great-grandson, Invercargill surgeon John Hall Jones. Like Thompson, he's a driven man. 20 books and an authority especially on Fiordland, the one area that stayed a blank on the maps of his famous forebear. But Thompson's his first love. He's the keeper of the 300 or so paintings of this talented surveyor. Paintings that are a fascinating window into our colourful past. The first house in Invercargill, the first look at Te Anau, Mount Cook from the east. Thompson trod the south, enduring incredible privation. And wherever he went, he mapped, he sketched, he noted. His load was heavy, but even though he was not a well man, his heart was light. There's a whimsy in these paintings hard to find in other records. As a person too, he uh, does have a delightful sense of humour, and this comes through in his books on early Malaya, glimpses of life into Malaya, and also um, in uh, Otago, he wrote a delightful little book, Rambles with a Philosopher, and, and a delightful sense of humour comes through. Crossing the Horse Range, north of Palmerston, gives the name new meaning when we see these paintings. Life wasn't easy, yet Thompson covered most of Otago and Southland. He named much of Otago after places in his native Scotland, St. Bathans, Naseby. The story goes he gave the many Otodo Creeks their animal titles, Hogburn, Kyburn or Cowburn, and so on, simply because his clerks couldn't handle the Maori names. Uh, he named Mount Ida after Bamburgh Castle, King Ida's Castle, huge mm. and square. Um, so that and Tiger Hill, there we are down there. Well, there's, there's poetry in there people don't know about, mm. isn't there? Thompson's bridges are still there. At Wainakarua, near the Mill House, these magnificent arches are based on the famous Twizel Bridge in Scotland. His meticulous maps, completed in long southern winters, were a model for later surveyors. His triangulation mapping system was a world first. And wherever he went, his great-grandsons followed. I'd always wondered if these rocks, this extraordinary rock formation actually existed, but last year in the Mount Aspiring National Program, um, Park Program, we climbed mm. Mount Grandview, and here we have uh, the rocks. Same rocks. Same rocks, same formation, yeah. and the view of Hawea, just as uh, Hawea and Wanaka, just as Thompson saw it. And very interestingly, he also named Mount Pisa, the Pisa range from the top of Grandview. I looked across south to Mount Pisa and there was a great big leaning tower, just like the leaning tower of Pisa. And of course, the next day I had to climb the Pisa range and there's this massive tower yeah, about three, uh, 30 feet high. Thompson, who was there to record Gabriel's gully, who predicted the development of Queenstown, came to New Zealand a sick man. 16 years of pioneering work setting up Singapore and building the massive Horsburgh Lighthouse left him an invalid. But he wasn't a man to shirk a challenge, and New Zealand owes him a lot. They did have a whip around at the office when he retired as Surveyor General, and in those days they ran to magnificent metre-high silver mementos. But Thompson's great-grandson reckons there's still recognition to come. Thompson was driven to write books, driven to paint. You've been driven to write books. What is it that pushes you on? I think it's a personal satisfaction um, putting something down for the permanent record which you, you hope may be of some interest, some value to future generations. It's a personal satisfaction and I'm rather hoping my next book on uh, a big illustrated history of J.T. Thompson will be number 20. I think that'll be a nice figure. I hope you go on from there. Thank you. <laughs>